Oh. You are not seeing it. It doesn't, you see, it's, you see, when you want to change the society, mm. because the majority of the people, including yourself, live off the old order, mm. they don't see the future. Mm. That's, why, that's why they say, that's why they say, leader, must be a visionary. So yesterday, Mr. Peter will be, as usual, you know, it's, it's, it has become a normal thing for Mr. Peter will be to always kill the show. He was at Kadaria Ahmed town hall meeting yeah, yesterday. Many actually said he shouldn't attend the town hall meeting because the so-called Kadaria Ahmed has been, has over time shown to be someone that is uh, partial and she's mostly you know, related to most of these uh, positions from APC, especially LRFI. And um, so it has been shown that she is biased and she has a kind of resentment for Peter Obi. So most of Peter Obi supporters were like, oh, we shouldn't go because uh, it might not be a level playing field. It might be a setup. People might have, um, the opposition, the APC might have planted some very tricky and uh, boxing question for him but uh mr obi being a smart man he first no let me just go like that, that's one thing we like uh, i personally like about uh, mr peter obi mr peter obi is someone that won't segregate and this is what he has been preaching i love people who walk the talk he, he, he doesn't preach something and does another thing he will preach what he says and he will do it like at least by example, we have said he's going to agi- he's going to dialogue with every agitator. Like anybody that is not happy with his government, he's going to talk to them and you no know, go down and go and meet them. That what do you want us to do for you? And he has been showing it. Same with this too. Over time, I've noticed anybody that has uh, issues with Peter B, he goes to them and he talks to them. When Soludo came out and he blasted and he said all sort of things about Peter Obi, what was Peter Obi's reply? Um, Soludo is my brother. He always remain my brother, you know. And he didn't even take it personal. And that's what he has been preaching. He has said he wants to bring back peace. He wants to unify the country. He wants to bring everybody back. He wants to repair the damage in the country. And he has been showing it over his time. And um, one thing, like he, he actually did justice to 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 all the questions. I'm going to post some of the videos there um, about the old Biafra 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 topic. So let's just watch the video of when they asked him about the Biafra uh, the Biafra topic, the Biafra agitation, and his reply and answer to it. Yes, on the, on, on, there's a second question that was asked, and I actually think maybe you are the one that should try and answer it. Um, what is your position regarding um, the agitation for the state of the Africa and people's right to self-determination? Uh, can you allow Mr. President to answer? <laughs> yes, he, he's better if you choose, to, if you choose. No, I will, let he, me tell you. His okay. answering will make more sense. Okay. Me. I've said it. He said it. Uh, 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 my young, uh, because at this stage, I won't have two graduates. I'll call the person who asked the question a son. Yes. So yes. I have two graduates at home. Let me tell you when it comes to the issue of agitation, it's not yes or no. People are agitated everywhere, even in my house. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So when the first thing you do with an agitator is to sit down and listen to the person who is agitating. Unless you sit down, you cannot say yes or no. I'm a Nigerian. I'm contesting the election as a Nigerian. I'm not contesting as any from any other place. I'm a Nigerian. I believe in Nigeria. I believe in unity of Nigeria. And I believe that I'm going to bring all agitators back to Nigeria and make it work for them. Because the reason why they're agitating is injustice. When you provide justice, equity, and create a level playing field, where people start at water, there will be agitation. So Wait. there was agitation. <laughs> there was agitation. There was agitation. But don't forget, there was agitation yesterday in America. Yes. Before. Don't think America is like this. Mm. There was agitation before. There was agitation before in Brazil. 
Say that I can show you countries where there's so much agitation. But as when level playing field were created, where people start work, talent, much of the opportunity, all these things will go. Okay. So Just wait. He, he wants to ask I, something. I allowed my principal to answer this question because we have nothing to hide. Hmm. When I joined this, his ticket, and just before I joined it, I faced a great deal of resistance and afterwards a great deal of difficulty, all centered around this. He is the best, best person to answer, and he has told you clearly, I allowed him because there is absolutely nothing to hide about uh, that, that, agitation or yeah. about his candidate. Biafra topic. Personally, and this question was asked by a northerner, a, a university level four university students, because I sincerely don't understand. Personally, I didn't even grow up to hear about the old Biafra war. I, 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 something I just read in the news, something I saw on YouTube, so this is something in, in which I, I had knowledge of. And obviously, this person asking this question, who is in year four of, of his university, will be in probably is a uh, early 20s or mid uh, yes probably in his early 20s maybe 23 24 years old uh, no i do know that's that's the worst of it then he's asking question about biafra like does he even know what biafra means does he even know what caused the, the biafra war you know i think youths and uh youth should be the ones who are more open-minded you know, we've seen most of our, uh, most of people from our parents' age, they vote based on sentiment, religion, and uh, and tribal sentiment. But not youths that have gone to school, you know, you, you've gone to your primary school, secondary school, and your university age. Like, if you still vote based on tribal sentiment after completing your educational, uh, going through all this rigorous education, you should probably go back home and return your money back to your parents because you failed. You failed them. You failed. You, you, you've just gone to school. You've not actually been educated. There's a difference between having the certificate and being educated. An educated person will not vote based on religion or, or tribal sentiments. Like, you actually listen to these candidates, listen to what they, they want, they, they are selling to you. And after, it's very easy to actually have a very written manifesto I have people to write notes for you and read it out, you know, clean, nice, speak to Queen's English. But we also have to know what have you done when you've been in a position, when you've been in a when when you've been in power, the money they kept with you probably when you were, when you were a state governor, when you were a senator or has a red member, how did you manage this this these monies? And that's how we should know a good leader, not uh, because a leader is a Christian or a leader is a Muslim or a leader is a Yoruba man, Igbo man, or Hausa man. No. What then we see how someone that is in university asking silly question? What does he have to? What does he know about Biafra? Yeah, another now. I is from Bonu Madiguri that is ravaged by Boko Haram members. You have time. You have a one in a lifetime opportunity to ask a presidential candidate, a leading presidential candidate, a question. You cannot ask him, how are you going to solve the Boko Haram in my state? We are concerned about that. I'm very sure, I'm 100% sure he has never been to Southeast before in his life. And he's concerned about whatever is happening in Southeast when your own state is not even secured. And while it's even, rumor has it that it was the state governor of Bornu State, the Kashim Shetima that is currently the vice presidential candidate of APC was the one that started. It was under in Boko Haram, they, they, they grew wings. And you are living in that state where Boko Haram has even taken some local government and you have to pay tax before you go to farm to Boko Haram and bandits. And you have the chance and you're asking the person about uh, Biafra. You know, I think Northerners should first remove the log of wood in their eye before they remove the speck of wood in another person's eye. For goodness sake. Like me now in the Southwest, we have um, full annihilation with kidnappers. If you have a chance to speak with PO, I will ask, are you going to secure Southwest? No. You know, that should be my concern. Are you going to secure my people? Are you going to take care of my people? 
But I think Northerners they've shown to always want to vote based on ethnic and religious. And I and, and I necessarily don't blame them. I blame the elites, I blame their leaders because they've actually failed to actually impact lives in the north. And um and and it has been it has been actually uh it has been intentional because any anybody that is educated and um, can actually feed themselves, they would easily decide for themselves that okay, this is who we want to vote for. But since they've decided to leave them in poverty and, and just teach them to grow up in poverty, it's very easy for them to maneuver their mind and change their mind through religion, through tribal sentiment. And um, I think that's just the old the old point about this issue. And then uh, at the end of the day, Mr. Peter will be killed it. That was just the main part in which I, I feel I should um, address and uh, enjoy the last part of the video where he actually did his astro. It was nice. No, it's not money. It's you no know, Peter will be killing interviews, stand up meeting. It's just it's like bread and butter for us. You know, Peter, Peter will be so easy to sell. You don't even need to sweat. You no, know? if you are obedient, you have points. No, nobody, I don't deserve that. I mean, can no boys can no bully you? You bully them. No, that's a good thing. Peace out. Just use this video to to good body. Unique selling point is tell Nigerians in a nutshell again, remind them why when February they go to the polls, they should vote for the two of you. Okay. Two of us have appealed to Nigeria. Next year's election should not be based on tribe. No tribe buys bread cheaper or have better roots and everything. It should not be based on religion. No religion buys bread cheaper or have been able to employ everything. It should not be based on my turn. It is turn of Nigerians to take back their country. Mm -hmm. We have promised we will secure a united this country. That's your promise. We have promised we will ensure that we move Nigeria from consumption to production, start pulling people out of poverty. We will ensure we will work with rule of law, deal with the issue of corruption, where we will bring it to a minimum. We will govern from the front. We will be in charge. And we will make Nigeria work we are, today we don't have, we have a Nigeria, but we don't have Nigerians. We will create Nigerians. Mm. We will be proud of that country because we'll be in charge. The, 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 it will stop at our desk and we'll work as the brother. As the, no team in this equation can beat our team. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Peter Obi and Dr. Dati.